So I have to thank uh, Kalyan, Ganesh and several other friends. Um, it has been very encouraging to talk about this particular title. So I am going to talk about room temperature superconductivity as a theorist. And of course, as always, inspiration comes from some experimental results which are rather unexpected. So that is what I will do today. Okay. So I have to acknowledge, uh, I was just remembering uh, that I was introduced to serious superconductivity theory only 50 years ago, 1970, when I joined as a PhD student, it is about 50 years, right? Um, Professor N. Kumar, late N. Kumar, gave a beautiful course on many body theory and in introduced to us BCS theory. And also Professor Kumar and Sinha, around the same time in 71, early 71, wrote a very important paper on possibility of room temperature superconductivity uh, called light induced superconductivity. So, my interest in superconductivity started from then. So, they are the senior collaborators, then P. W. Anderson, I will mention about him, then younger collaborators like Shankar and many others over years. Uh, so, I have had great collaboration. So, I also should thank Science and Engineering Research Board, New Delhi and also Perimeter Institute for support. So, this is the young P. W. Anderson. You see him here. He is completed 95 and running 96, literally running. So, uh, sorry to tell this anecdote. Last year, I was there at Princeton. I wrote to him saying that I will come for a week as usual. He said, you come for a week, but I can see you only for half a day. I am very busy. So, on the appointed day, he came driving on his own. And uh, then I alerted the friends in physics department that it is his birthday, 95th birthday. So, that is a crowd. Uh, you recognize some people, Duncan Haldane, Ravin Butt, Elliot Lieb, and Shivaji Sondi, Daniel Fisher, and many others. Okay. So, I weigh a lot of my knowledge and understanding and interest in superconductivity to understand because just like an accident, in late 86, we started collaborating on the field of high temperature superconductivity. That is the beginning. Okay. So, room temperature superconductivity is a dream. Uh, there has been claims in the past. And many of them are elusive ones, I will explain what it is. And then some of them are difficult ones. And uh, Tapa Pandey's finding has excited a lot of interest, because if it is true, it is going to be wonderful. So, I call it as ephemeral, elusive, unstable, highly nonlinear noise phenomena. But we want it to be a very stable and good superconductor. We have, we want a superconductor to superconduct itself, not conduct in a very bad way. So, in the process, I will focus a lot on a model called a repulsive Hubbard model and a way to understand them and how it leads to very interesting possibilities. Then I will talk about the actors here, namely monovalent metal, silver and gold. And uh, you know, nobody would have expected superconductivity from silver and gold, because silver never superconducts. You cool it down to the lowest temperature possible. Gold also never superconducts. They are best metals, robust metals. They resist any instability. They do not want to go have any order. But if put two of them together, they behave differently. What is going on? So, I will show that there are faults in the nanostructures where the faults become virtue and I will develop my story and make some predictions. So, this is the plan. So, right at the beginning I want to say that you know uh, the Tapa Pandey's uh, claim is uh, so exciting, it needs to be done carefully, it needs to be repeated by many labs. But uh, from a theory point of view, having a long experience in this field, I strongly feel it is not impossible. So, that is what I will try to tell you. Because it's, it turns out, you know, in science, uh, you have nature telling us what is going on. Then we also have imagination, we have models to guide us. We can tell what can be there 
next step. Then nature will laugh at us and say that, yes, I already have that. So I will show some examples. Okay. So some of the things are there in two RK preprints, one I put last year, one I put recently. Um, so I submitted it to a journal last week. Then they asked some reorganization of the manuscript. Now I don't know how to log into this, so it's getting delayed. So I will seek some of young people's help. It's a computer problem. Okay, so it's a holy grail of solid state physics. Technological implications will be profound starting from power transmission. We will not have the 30 percent power loss. And if you go to hospital, every big hospital has this fantastic superconducting magnet, NMR imaging, brain scan imaging. For that, you need superconductors. Transport, not transport, transport, windmills, Josephson gets used. And another revolutionary possibility qubits in the form of Cooper bear box, flux qubits, Majorana fermions, and uh, squid sensors, magnetic levitations. This picture I like very much. Now, this is a Japanese friends have demonstrated this magnetically levitated train with superconducting magnets 2000 kilometer per hour. At this speed, the uh, our body will burn because it's so it's like some meteorite entering the earth's atmosphere it'll burn so you'll have to shield it and so on but even a 500 kilometer will be okay i can go to madurai very easily in an hour or so 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 these are all possibilities magnetic levitated train which uses this famous uh, meissner effect where a superconductor expels any external magnetic field it cannot tolerate external magnetic field so the process of expulsion is like a force. So you can balance it against gravity and you can float. OK, so this is general introduction. Now, whenever we do science, we find that you know whatever we do has profound implications in unexpected corners. That's what happened with superconductivity. Even uh, early idea of uh, Summer felt that metals can be thought of as a free Fermi C had quickly a profound implication it went to the stars and black holes. Chandrasekhar sitting in presidency college applied it to gravitational fo forces bal being balanced by this Pauli principle, Pauli pressure and then came up with Chandrasekhar's mass limit. And then BCS theory of cold superconductors has given key insight into unification of weak electromagnetic and strong interactions through you know, the spontaneous mass generation Anderson Higgs mechanism, Higgs particle and so on and the context flux tubes that came in the context of solid su superfluid helium 4 and superconductors related to quark confinement all, all kinds of this is something remarkable in theoretical physics a good development in one corner has immediate implications elsewhere it gets so that is true you can already see this for example in 87 or 86 the revolutionary high TC development took place that has already had uh, from theory point of view when you try to understand the high temperature superconductors all kinds of ideas like emergent ga gauge fields quantum order possible future roles and uh, all kinds of things are happening this is something remarkable about uh, theoretical physics you don't need to go for applications a deeper understanding will there are many bright minds with profound uh, implications okay now this is also something i wanted to share with young people see if you look at uh, nature around us, uh, the, the world of uh, materials, basic things are like electric charge, mass of electron, mass of proton, atomic number, velocity of light, Planck's constant. These are all the basic inputs. So you should be able to tell what is the highest density of solid that you can form. Of course, diamond is very hard. There are other materials which are very dense, not hard. So can you put a limit on that? Similarly, hardness in light elements, for example, you know, boron nitride and so on. What is the highest Young's modulus you can have? What is the highest transition temperature of ferromagnetism or superconductivity, magnetic resistance and so on? And is it possible to have superconducting qubits at room temperature? Because finally, the laws of physics, the laws of quantum mechanics, electromagnetism governs these things. So we should be able to, based on theoretical grounds, give some limits on possibilities. In fact, there are not many people work on it, but it's worth thinking about. Um, uh, and uh, at the moment, theory is doing very badly. For example, if you take about superconductivity, 
to the extent that uh, one famous uh, experimentalist used to say that uh, if you want to find a new if you want to find a new superconductor there are many things to be avoided including theorist <coughs> so okay so that's a level of theory but i will say that things are slightly better okay um now there has been evidences of uh, elusive superconductors this is one uh, my friend pablo eskenazi from uh, germany he has seen evidence for granular superconductivity in graphite occasionally once in 30 samples they are there this is something again i wanted to mention we human beings we think that we have a lot of power true we have power to destroy things but we don't have power to control you know for example if you take biology things are out of control completely and there things are happening at nano scale so we are slowly discovering so many of the superconducting phenomena that i will point out are happening at nano scale so we have no control we can maybe control 500 atoms but we cannot control avogadro number of atoms 10 to the power of 21 atoms to our will so they get organized in their, in their own uh, you know way that they like then we have no control and this is one beautiful phenomena where there are any number of evidences that there are superconductivity at room temperature in pockets but you come tomorrow it's not there so we simply have no control so this is where theory can play an important role and think about possibilities so this is one thing then uh, another friend yako kopelevich from campinas brazil he has written a very nice article collecting past unstable and elusive superconductors it all starts with uh, metal ammonia solution this is back in 1936 by og at stanford he prepared a material he saw room temperature meissner effect once in 30 material it's decades since many people have tried to see it occasionally they see it but they are not able to stabilize it so this again tells about our powerlessness when it comes to nano scale pritham can build some nano scale you know quantum dots and connect them but he cannot create a superconductor room temperature superconductor even though theory tells you that it's possible so we are powerless but we have to okay so there are other examples in fact uh, famous cuprate bednars and muller discovered it in 86 uh, it has gone up but there are evidences again elusive uh, superconductivity at 200 kelvin according to some theory I developed it can go up to 250 kelvin okay now very recently may have heard in the uh, newspaper i mean we must have read that under pressure everything happens you know you apply pressure students work hard and everything happens they start superconducting so this material h2s sorry i have put the 3 wrongly there was some computer error it is h3s you apply extraordinary high pressure how much pressure the pressure is like half of the pressure at the center of the earth it's about 200 gigapascal extremely high pressure you can make it in the lab and it becomes superconducting at 2 not kelvin and then there is another material called lanthanum superhydride that becomes almost room temperatures it has not come to chennai temperature yet but you know somewhere in alaska or um, siberia so these are all room tem sorry is it under pressure this is also under pressure extremely high pressure 200 200 gigapascal yeah you can see here the tc has a dome structure so it has a maximum of 260 around this gigapascal so i had a slide i forgot to bring it how to like if somebody steps on your toe what is the pressure you know you can feel the pain and the pain is related to pressure i don't remember exactly so these are all past now if you look at periodic table of elements these are all the uh, table now periodic table of superconducting not not all the elements become superconducting in particular our friends copper silver and gold and other mono element sodium element, sodium potassium and rubidium cesium they don't become superconductor but however lithium becomes a monovalent metal at half a milli kelvin very low temperature so you can pra for practical purposes monovalent metals like this and this don't superconduct even unexpected fellow like iron under pressure becomes superconducting so there are superconductors in the periodic table many many of them don't superconduct 
So, the color code. Ah, the color code. So, this. Uh, so, these are all ambient pressure superconductor. They, the white fellows do not superconduct at all. Things like calcium, they superconduct at extremely high pressure. Just to give you this example of calcium or iron. So, yellow uh, is ambient pressure and uh, green is uh, high pressure. Exactly, yeah. Uh, no, uh, yeah. White is white. non superconducting, yellow is superconducting at a normal condition, uh, green is under pressure. Okay, so about, yeah, this is the thing. So, in this background came this very exciting uh, paper from Tapa and Pandey to solid state uh, chemist from IAC Bangalore. Pandey is a boss, Tapa is a student. They worked very hard for two years to make this. What is this? So, these spherical objects are silver nanoparticles of dimensions like 10 to 20 nanometer. They are embedded in gold matrix. So, it is a very hard job. You can form an alloy, you know, put them together and mix it and do all kinds of things. But to do this, as uh, another friend uh, Avana says, it is like goldsmith's job. They have to literally take clusters of silver and put together, assemble them through chemical means and finally remove the chemicals and then cover it with gold and so on. So, this is the silver nanoparticle of 10 nanometer embedded in gold matrix. So, why they did this? They were inspired by some theory. Theories are always helpful. I used to tell an anecdote about power of theories and use of theories. Kemmerling once discovered the famous superconductivity because he was inspired by a theory of Lord Kelvin, who said that if you go down to lowest temperature, every metal should become an insulator. Because we did not know quantum mechanics at that time, the only thing we knew was um, Rutherford model of electron and nucleus. So, if you take a metal like copper or mercury, at room temperature electrons are running around because of thermal energy. If you cool down, they will go home and sit around the nucleus. So, it should become an insulator. So, here is a theory. Kemmerling once wanted to prove his friend correct. So, being a friend, he discovered not superconduct, not insulator, but superconductivity. So, friends are always useful. So, in the same way, Tapa and Pandey were inspired by a theory called plasma exchange, I will hint at it later. It so happens that uh, author, one of the author who proposed it, a uh, old friend of mine who is no more, Gabriel Giuliani uh, from Purdue. So, they were inspired by theory and they did this. But now, there are experimental evidences that that is not at work. Something else is going on. Okay. What do they see? They see signals which are like superconductivity. Resistance become extremely low four orders of magnitude lower than the best metal at the, those temperatures, but it does not go to 0. So, it is not a superconductor in that sense, but however, if you look at so called Meissner effect, what happens to external magnetic field? The external magnetic field is expelled, but not perfect diamagnetism. There is partial diamagnetism, which tells you there are fractions of this bulk, which are superconducting, if you interpret it. So, the resistance goes to very low value. Then if you look at this, this tells you about how the T c changes with magnetic field. That is, you have here 236 Kelvin, 5 Kelvin, uh, 235 Kelvin. Then you apply magnetic field, the T c becomes smaller. So, if you extrapolate it, it hits a sky around few hundred Tesla, which is a very high magnetic field. So, this is characteristic of a superconductor. So, if somebody did not show me resistance, and showed this T c dependence in Meissner, I said that it is granular superconductivity. I will easily immediately conclude. But now, since the claims are tall, big claims, we cannot conclude. So, look at the resistance. They fluctuate enormously and they vary. And then similarly, Meissner signals also depends on magnetic field. So, this is the state of the art. So, when uh, Tapa and Pandey presented it last year, immediately people raised very valid questions. For example, if you look at noise here, uh, it was Skinner who pointed out that the two noises are identical. It cannot be a noise because noise should be in general typically different. So, in fact, uh, it was a very important and good criticism because recently they have found out it is not a noise. The signal strength is 10 times higher than or 5 times higher than instrument resolution. So, there is some reproducible irregularity. 
which is not uncommon. Apparently, it's possible in some chaotic nonlinear system. So occasionally, you see some reproducible irregularity. So this is another fix physical phenomena that is part of this discovery. Okay. Now you, where is uh, there? Are, they have done it various uh, samples with various silver concentration. You find here reaching Chennai temperatures. We are close. So I, I will start calling it room temperature. Living in Chennai, but today it's cooler. Um, okay. Now, so this has happened. So the world got excited. Lot of criticisms, lots of discussions, in the also in the social media. Fortunately, I don't know how to use Facebook or other things, so I am totally out of this social media. Um, uh, but friends to inform me. So it's a very important uh, challenge. So friends try to help. Uh, Tapa Pandey, so uh, Satish Ogale from Isar Pune, he and his group used laser to create this. And uh, in fact, I wrote to him immediately saying that you know you need very sharp interfaces. So they did not have sharp interfaces. They did not see it. But it, it's a very important report because in future, if whatever is going on is true, it could be very useful. Then uh, uh, IIT Mandi, uh, Balakrishnan and. Uh, um, Shaker, yeah, Shaker. Uh, uh, group have uh, done what they did. They took a thin gold film of 40 nanometer and sputter it with gold. They see one in ten samples which is superconducting, which is similar to what was seen by Tapan Pandey. They had 125 samples, of which ten of them superconduct in the way that I showed. So there is something going on. Now this group at uh, Bhuvaneshwar and in Delhi. They have taken thin film and then they have ion implantation machines, so they have silver ions are implanted. They don't see, they see at 1 Kelvin, which is good, it's better than 0. So, in fact, uh, they, I immediately wrote to them that it's a good beginning because Tapa Pandey has many 1 Kelvin, so you have caught the correct one. So, work hard, you may get 200. Now, right in Chennai, uh, Pradeep uh, and uh, MSR Rao and Setu and friends are working very hard on it. Uh, partly following my theoretical uh, suggestion, maybe they discover something better than room temperature superconductor. So this history shows that theories are very helpful. So uh, we have two, you know, outstanding electrochemists at Mad Science, Bosco Emanuel and Raghavendran. Raghavendran is an associate here uh, from Kals Kalasalingam Engineering College. They have a very important suggestion of doing this by electrochemical methods. <coughs> So, uh, with in collaboration with Somnath Rai and MSR Rao, they have some new plans. Okay, this is the status now. So, every day morning, uh, I look at the archive, first superconductivity section, then condensed matter section, looking for new experiments, and this is what uh, you see. Okay. Ah, so, assuming that it is indeed superconductivity, uh, like a theorist, you, know, you can always make assumption and then withdraw later. Um, one of the unavoidable consequences of this large TC and large HC2, this HC2 should be here. Without my knowledge, it walked away. This is the power of my computer control. I don't know. Just this morning, I put it there. Okay. Anyway, so one conclusion is Cooper pair size is extremely short, few lattice parameters. You can just scale it. For example, if you take mercury. The TC is 3 Kelvin, the Cooper pair size is about 500 angstrom unit. This is about 100 times larger, so it should come down 5 angstrom unit, 10 angstrom unit. So that excludes mechanisms like plasma mechanism. So something else should be going on at um, atomic level. Then let us look at the material my friends have create, created. So silver and the gold are very noble, they do not react. So there is no chemical reaction and no alloy formation no voids, it is not an inhomogeneous alloy. So what it is? So when you see pictures I will show, you see local if, uh, face centered cubic crystalline order which is you take a triangular lattice, put one triangular lattice, put another so that atom lies in between, there are two places you can put B or C. So you put A, B, C and then A, B, C that gives you FCC lattice. Then you see stacking faults. Then you see grain boundaries, 
then you see dislocations and then you see atom clusters. Okay, before I proceed now to theory, I would like to you know if there are questions about uh, experiments of Tapa Pandey, please tell me I will redirect the question to Kalyan because he has thought a lot about it. So, uh, yes. Yeah. No, no, whatever they have done is for a specific sample. If you do average, you get lower value. So, the, here, this is one instance, it is like earthquake. If you do averages, you do not get uh, meaningful result. Same sample, exactly. If you do it tomorrow, you get a different signal. So, uh, so there is some uh, uh, yeah, ephemeral character and it is there and not there. As I said, uh, things are at least uh, from my understanding happening at nano scale, we have simply no control because you prepare a bulk maybe 10 micron size and then inside that things are behaving in their own way and uh, okay, I will explain that. So, if there are no questions, I will uh, proceed. Kalyan, do you have a question? I can. No, I don't have a question. I just wanted to mention the sum of the samples, if you just uh, after about 6 days, yeah. uh, the T C increases actually. Uh, Correct, yeah. So, there is that effect also. Like <coughs> TC increases and uh, also it is I, in fact I should have given a gold you know which is very noble and which is very and so on becomes a ferromagnet is well known gold nanoparticles nano rods it has been experimentally confirmed that it is ferromagnet but not useful anyway gold is not useful what is that too you know just there hangs around the neck uh, so it becomes a ferromagnet, but at very small length scale. And the ferromagnetism is something which is possible only through quantum mechanics and electron electron repulsion. This is a well established fact, particularly in metals. So, there are indications that somehow electron electron interactions, which I will elaborate on, is playing an important role in, in this material. So, this is an important uh, uh, insight from nature. So, these are all what our friends did. So, now, yeah, if you take uh, one of the pictures from Tapa Pande, this is supposed to be a gold, uh, silver nanoparticle embedded in gold. Now, you can see lattice planes. This is supposed to be called high resolution, some imaging, HR, at HRTM, high resolution transmission electron microscopy. So, you send uh, electron wave and then look at the interference and then you can do atomic scale imaging at some depth. So, uh, it has to be interpreted properly, but when I spoke to uh, Pandey, he assures me that there are lots of stacking faults, which is what I guessed at the beginning and there are grain because you can see this lattice orientation changing and uh, that means there are grain boundaries and they are going to play important role in uh, my understanding of what is going on. So, this is uh, a important picture. Uh, so, also we have to be very cautious, somebody has done an experiment, we have to develop a theory. So, we should get as much experimental facts as possible, otherwise we can go astray very easily. So, in every development experiments are great guidance. If you look very carefully, you can start seeing atoms dis misplaced clusters and uh, like uh, stacking falls along this line. Even more closely, st you start seeing many other things. Thanks to computer you know you can magnify I just took their picture and magnified it back and forth. Okay. Now, what is our system? So, our system namely gold and silver they crystallize in so called face centered cube. So, here you have a cube in which there are atoms at the corners of the cube and also at the centers of the face this is called F C C lattice and it is amazing that if you take that and look at along the body diagonal they are basically stacked triangular lattice of atoms. So, you have this uh, reddish triangular lattice of atom. Now, you can put next lattice so that they sit in the gap. So, it is a close packing. Then you put the next fellow in the next gap. So, you repeat it A B C A B C A B C that is called close packing it gives you this. Then this is a simple cube monovalent metals like lithium, potassium, sodium, rubidium and cesium they all crystallize in the so called body centered cubic which is different from face centered cubic. So, if you 
look at uh, so now what kind of defects can be there so this is something important for us so we will discuss it a little bit so this is you know you look at a cross section you this is the one 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 direction you have lattice planes coming out like this and they are stacked a b c a b c you have beautiful now you can create what is called a stacking fault for example here you have a b c then uh, you put a b a instead of uh, c so these are fault and uh, locally it won't be uh, as far as nearest neighbor as concerned it's close packing so locally it won't make any difference in terms of densities and so on but in terms of communication between the electrons an electron from here will feel a different neighbor rather than here so the quantum interference pattern will change so packing doesn't make much difference but however quantum interference will be different for example here you see that after you produce two such uh, faults you move in this direction so this are called the twinning and uh, many many interesting metallurgical phenomena and physical phenomena are related to presence of this kind of defects i'm going to argue that it's this kind of defects which is also hiding some superconductivity in the next uh, so now if you take silver since electrons are involved let us look at quantum physics of electrons so we learn in solid state physics that these are all conduction electrons free electrons nearly so you can solve the problem of electron moving in a periodic potential provided by the nuclei and also the core core of electrons so you see this beautiful band structure so this is supposed to be the fermi level if you notice it there is a band which is almost quadratic characteristic of a free electron then there is some distortions here and uh, the width is about uh, 10 electron volt and then if you look at constant energy surface so called fermi surface it looks nearly spherical there are some necks and bellies so because of this uh, people treat silver and gold copper and all as essentially free electrons that is when in these metals electrons have strong coulomb repulsions among themselves but somehow at the end of the day it doesn't matter so we are li living in a three dimensional world so coulomb repulsions can be taken care of and we can still live like free electrons that is not true in two dimension or when if you go to ranganathan street you are no more free uh, you get completely correlated with neighbors also if you travel in a busy road it's a one dimensional system correlation becomes very important you are no more free so some that kind of things are going to happen so it so happens silver and gold in three dimension behaves like a free electron in fact it is taken for granted in textbooks but to show that they are indeed free electrons requires very sophisticated uh, many body theory developed by lando and others but for we will take it for granted okay so it's at the back of uh, this so some called fermi c you all know that that is basically if you think about uh, momentum space an electron in a periodic boundary condition in the box can occupy states in momentum space and then in each state only two electrons can be there with up and down spin mr pauli says that you cannot put more electrons while mr bose is very accommodative bosons pauli is very strict he says fis so they you know cannot have more than one person in a room so you build a ground state which is a fermi c now if you look at uh, electrons in in this energy space so these are all the density of energy levels available they are all occupying and then there is a sharp fall this is called a fermi energy or a fermi surface now what we have learned through various phenomenology about all these uh, monomer metals is that pauli has essentially frozen all these electrons they cannot participate in any low energy activity if you apply an electric field basically a shell of electrons whose thickness is close to kbt becomes active there is pauli paramagnetism and variety of things so this is an amazing freezing phenomena that takes place because of quantum physics and pauli principle so it's because of this in three dimension you don't see interesting things you see fermi c but according to chandrasekhar it's interesting because it say it's it has profound implications elsewhere but uh, for if somebody who doing metal physics or want to do superconductor this is totally useless now we will see that the same thing can behave differently when you go to the dimension so this is the theory of superconductivity just a way of saying is that if you take this metal an electron 
which is very close to the chemical pollution, as it moves, it can create a lattice disturb disturbance. The last lattice disturbance will die away very slowly. By that time, before it dies, another electron will come and feel the disturbance. So you say this corresponds to a virtual exchange of a phonon. So two electrons which don't see face to face each other get correlated. And this mild correlation is capable of producing what is called superconductivity. It's an amazing uh, feat which was shown by Borden, Cooper and Schieffer. And they wrote down a Hamiltonian. In fact, I envy them because it's a Hamiltonian which is solvable and gives very non-trivial result. You can solve it by mean field theory. The corrections are very small. But the kind of thing that we have landed up is not solvable. I will show, I will tell you why I envy them. So this is Bodin, Cooper, Schieffer, Hamiltonian, which is solved. And then basically you get uh, BCS theory. The end result is the following. Very beautiful result. It tells you that uh, the transition temperature of a superconductor is equal to d by frequency, something to do with lattice vibration. Typically, the scale is about 500 Kelvin, 400 Kelvin for a solid. And then exponential of minus 1 over rho density of electronic states available momentum space close to the Fermi level called the density of states. And then some strength of coupling between electron and lattice vibration. And this is a very non-trivial result because the dependence on this rho and g is very non-analytic. So it's an unperturbative phenomena which they discovered. This is ruling superconductivity at low temperature. Now if you look at it, what you would like to see is that if you want to go higher temperature, you increase this or increase this or decrease this, which is what people did. Then there was a warning from Macmillan, Anderson and Cohen long back saying that you are a physicist, you cannot change all these parameters at will. <laughs> if you change one, other will decrease. So they are constrained because of physics. So they said that the TC that you can reach cannot go above 30 Kelvin. It's a beautiful uh, development. Physical constraints telling you that you cannot have a very large TC like this, above 30 Kelvin. So this is in the background. Now, okay, with this background, now we want to see how can we get superconductivity out of these bad actors these metals. So let us think about it and with the help of a model we will slowly proceed. How am I doing with respect to time Ganesh? Oh and there is a hmm? 20 more minutes. 20 more I will. Yeah in fact thanks to Nimani I do not know if he is here. Oh, he did not come. So he warned me that last time when I gave a similar talk I did not even finish my introduction after one, year, one hour. So he said, you better finish your introduction in 10 minutes and then proceed. So I have finished my introduction. Please tell him that I finished my introduction. Can I? <laughs> okay. So now models you know, come into play. So what do we have? Well, we have a collection of atoms. If you take copper, copper has many, many electrons. But chemistry, uh, quantum mechanics teacher and chemistry friends tell me that there is one electron, namely valence electron at the outermost orbital which alone is active. So you can forget about the core. Okay, let me forget about the core. So I can think about a model in which the valence electron alone communicate and they go from one, elect one orbital to another orbital and hop and then form what is called a band. Now this band gets contribution from one degree of freedom or one orbital per site and each fellow can give one electron. And then when I go to momentum representation or momentum space, they can be filled with two electrons. So you have so-called half-filled band. That's a simple name for this called half-filled band. So nearly an electron field. So now people, Landau and others have showed that nothing hap interesting happens. Now let us do a thought experiment that Mr. Mott did several decades ago. Okay, now before that, in praise of models, you know, mathematical models of physical and other phenomena are extremely useful in physics, science and beyond. In fact, you know, economists have models, economists, psychologists have models, and of course the cinema world we have models, but you know, they are as good a sub loss of physics expressed succinctly. So I am I'm talking about in place of models, it exposes us to unexpected new worlds, physics and phenomena, emergence and hierarchy becomes manifest, exactly solvable models have enormous merit. But however, we should not get wedded to model that closely. Models have limitations and range of applicability. People often fall victims to models. 
models should not be used beyond their validity. It's a very important lesson that uh, repeatedly we learn in condensed matter physics. Great, you know, in Tamil we say yanaikum adisarikum sarukum. That means even elephant can sleep. So great minds have, you know, fallen to this uh, thing. So we should use models, but we should be careful. And models, some of the, okay, let me talk about models. I mean, I was just enumerating this slide I prepared in the morning today. Um, so you look at it. Einstein you now gave us a beautiful model called Einstein's model. He said, okay, give me a solid. It's a rigid object. So if you take any atom, it is surrounded by some neighbors. So the neighbors provide is a repulsive potential. So I will approximate it by some kind of well. Then I said a quantum vibration of this. So he explained specific heat of all solids in one stroke through called Einstein model. Of course, it's a very limited model. Debye came and corrected it, went beyond. Then uh, you know, lots of improvements are possible. Sommerfeld's free electron model, Heisenberg's model of magnetism, tight binding model of electrons that I just pointed out, something called Dickey model, uh, Ganesh, Sirtagiri, they are all working on it. And then Anderson model, Bodin Cooper Schieffer model, Hubbard model, Baxter Lee Mattis models, Majumdar Ghosh model. Haldane Shastri model, Shastri Sutherland model, Schwinger model, Thiering model, Gross Nebu model, Kitayev model, very popular recent model called SYK model. No other model in the past uh, history of physics has caught so much attention in a short span of time. Is modeled by Sach Dev A and Kitayev. I will tell a story about it later. Salam when. I am very sorry. See, this is the problem. I, 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 yeah. Many more models, exactly. So it's a sample, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bohr model, yeah. They are very fundamental. Both are, yeah. Now, some of these friends are models to follow. <laughs> we have to, you know, we in life look for models. Some of them are uh, great models in, particularly Anderson, you know. I, he's in his, if you look at his career, he has literally five models. In fact, uh, once I, there was a meeting honoring his uh, some, 50 years of contribution to condensed matter physics. So I told about success of Anderson in my understanding. What he does is he looks at an enormous variety of experimental results, keeps looking at them, looks at the graph. Finally, he comes up with a very simple model and that carries his name and uh, Nobel Prize and so on. So it's a good thing to follow for young people. So create your own model. Okay. Now, now I am going to say that this is the model that describes silver and gold. What is this model? So I am sure all of you are familiar with second quantization, some of you may not. So it basically says that you have a lattice, FCC lattice, denoted by the site index i and j and sigma or the spin index for the spin. It says that an electron can go from one side to another side. So this is called annihilation operator and this is called creation operator. So you. So the dynamics expressed very pictorially through these operators which have some their own commutation relation or anti-commutation relation. So if you give me this alone, this is basically undergraduate physics. I will diagonalize it to Fourier transformation and get simple behavior. Now what all these great men, Anderson, Hubbard, Kanamori, Goodsiller and Bogolev did was, okay, we will represent Coulomb repulsion among these electrons by a single parameter u which says that in a given site, in a given orbital, two electrons, if they sit on top of each other, it causes some energy U, which is positive. So it's a small deformation of a solvable free electron model. And it's amazing, you know, the Anderson discovered it in the context of magnetism and super exchange. Hubbard discovered it in another context of ferromagnetism. Kanamori discovered it in the context of ferromagnetism. Goodsiller discovered it in the context of ferromagnetism. People from different corners of the world came up with so it should be something good, you know. So many people thought about it independently. And then if you look at where it is useful, and it's a minimal model for strongly correlated system. That is, it's like some somewhat like Einstein model of lattice vibrations. So it has helped us to understand what are called Martin insulators, quantum antiferromagnetism, quantum spin liquids, non-fermi liquids, metallic ferromagnetism, spin density wave, high temperature superconductor. Even solid helium-3 has been modeled using a board model, cold atom optical lattices. So a model which was just written down to include effect of interaction, a strong, particularly strong interaction, 
has yielded so much results over years. So like you know things like emergent gauge fields, quantum order, topological order. The very famous SVK model has its origin in RVB theory, which is related to Martin Slater. That's why I wanted to point out. So it creates a new world, and even people are very excited that this model exemplifies some fast quantum scrambling that goes on in quant uh, black hole. Who would have thought that um, lanthanum copper oxide described by Martin Slater will have anything to do with black hole? So that's the unity of physics. <coughs> Phenomena, you know, happening else, different places get connected. Who would have thought that Nambu will find a way to generate masses of elementary particles using BCS theory? So that's the kind of thing that has happened. So we, we will keep using this model. Now in the next few minutes, I will show you what can happen with this model, particularly. Okay, so what Mott did was to see the power of this model. Let me take this same set of silver atoms forming a cubic lattice. Let me expand the lattice so that the bandwidth number of neighbors times the hopping matrix becomes larger than the Coulomb repulsion. Sorry, the other way. It should be less than. U should be larger, excuse me. So what will happen is electrons are well separated. So they would like to go from here to here and gain some energy. Okay, you can gain some energy, but you lose energy because you are leaving your home. So there is a, an ionization energy and there is a accept an energy from here. So if you put it together, there is a repulsion. You will rather stay home. So from a simple Fermi C, you have gone to a situation in which there are no block states, no Pauli principle, just the electrons are sitting at home. So this is an extreme limit. Now, Mott said that connecting this metallic state and this extreme limit, there should be some transition which became Mott transition. Ex again inspired by experiments. Some materials which should have been metal based on simple theory became an insulator. But then you will notice that in this state, you have enormous degeneracy. That is every atom has one spin degree of freedom. So it provides you Hilbert space of two dimension. So the next particular two, so two times, two times, two, so two to the power of n dimensional Hilbert space is born. Because in the case of Fermi C, everything is frozen, so there are no low energy excitations here. All these spins are low energy excitation. So now, uh, if you now take this and do some simple quantum physics, immediately quantum magnetism comes. It tells you that these electrons, like children, won't stay home. So an electron will jump to the neighbor's house and get some laddu or something and then come back. So this is called you know, virtual exchange and Mr. Pauli does not allow virtual exchange of parallel spin. I do not know the analogy with children. So if two spins are parallel, you cannot go because of Pauli principle. So Pauli principle and the Coulomb repulsion and quantum mechanics join together and tells you that electrons would like to form so called singlet. Then they can undergo quantum fluctuation and gain energy. And uh, you know, if you take this, you will find that singlets like this, and then they can imagine coherent superposition. So this is how what was a Fermi C is getting deformed into some local entangled objects. So this is an entangled state. You know, like if you take, I had a picture, I forgot. So what I call as a singlet. Is, is it visible? Can. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you. So somebody is watching my slide. Okay, good. Thank you. So this is a singlet. So two spins are entangled. So I had a Fermi C. If you talk to a quantum information friend, they will say in Fermi C things are disentangled. They are all product states, but anti-symmetrized. Here you see that electrons pairwise are quantum entangled. And quantum mechanics also tells me that they can dance around. They can go from this configuration to another configuration, like in benzene. So there can be coherent superposition and different levels of entanglement. So you have created out of your Fermi C something totally different, which is so-called Martin Slater and spin liquid. And then if you play with it, you, what you find is you start uh, creating some holes in this system. Then the singlets can move. And uh, please take my word that it becomes a superconductor. So, in the case of BCS theory, you needed to control electrons at the Fermi level and to do a very careful job and get superconductivity. Here you get superconductivity in a very cheap way 
this was shown by Anderson and uh, we developed it further that you do get superconductivity with scales which are very different, I will come to it. So from a different starting point, the same metal when expanded gives you superconductivity. Now I am going to argue the same metal, you do not need to expand it, simply go to lower dimension and use this model and you will get superconductivity, what Tapa and Pandey observe as a possibility. There are of course challenges, I will come to it. So now this is uh, what is called a phase diagram of a model. So I am going to argue that suppose I have a hypothetical silver two dimensional lattice forming a triangular lattice. I am going to show you that if you take that silver in this, this is a diagram in which the repulsion is in the y axis and number of electrons is in the x axis. So if you take silver or gold number of electron is 1. So if you walk up increase u nothing happens it remains a metal and then at a particular point it becomes an insulator. So this is called a mod transition because you have expanded them so much effectively you have changed u over t electrons stay home. Now what various things in the context of cuprate and our theory showed was that if you move away from this half filling you get something called doped mod insulator and superconductivity and I will show very recent uh, de detailed numerical results which show that this continues this is spills over even in the place where it is not a mod insulator but in two dimension. If you look at the phase diagram in three dimension nothing interesting happens. So which is you can see through theory like uh, renormalization group analysis and so on. So there are many things I would like to say but there is no time so the nature of superconductivity and it turned out that uh, very early in uh, 2003 I wrote a paper in the context of sodium cobalt oxide where I predicted this kind of and now it is kind of established experimentally. Okay, so the thing is 3D silver or 3D uh, gold or ordinary metal, garden variety metals, you simply make a 2D silver or 2D gold, they will be room temperature superconductor. This is my prediction. But why do not you see it? In nature, you know, as I said, if you deposit silver, my model has a limitation because my model says that the silver forms a rigid triangular lattice. But in reality, it is susceptible to many other distortions and all the beautiful things that I am talking about will disappear. So that is where you have to go beyond the model that you started with. But however, I will argue that still it has some local superconductivity which is very important which can be made use of in a profitable way to get at least this tenuous or ephemeral superconductivity. Okay. So the message that you know this was a very important development in theory of superconductivity, we were bounded by this expression of BCS which told you that you cannot go above 30 Kelvin. Then came Anderson and then the, the theoretical work which says that you have a new scaling of superconducting TC with band parameter namely X times T. So the glue is very different from phonon exchange, it is a super exchange or local phenomena. So this was a very very important uh, message. So now I am going to use this message and show that what Tapa and Pandey are seeing is possible. Let me now this again uh, uh, see Hubbard model has been studied extensively using a variety of approximate many body methods from the point of view superconducting pairing correlations there is a rich history. Jorge Hirsch in 84, Scalapino, Mark Jarrell or group many many in fact I have many so I have put two names here with the blue I am because their results are going to become very useful for what I am going to claim. Okay, five minutes. Okay, I'm. so now what I am going to I am showing what I am showing you is a theory paper that came just two years ago. It's very nice that uh, these friends from Jap China. One more reason to be friendly with China. I have done a calculation which is very useful for me. What they did was they take a triangular lattice and calculated the tendency of this triangular lattice to become a superconductor. So they did a large enough cluster in the modern world and it used determinant in Monte Carlo method, Hassan is not here, he will appreciate it. So what you find is the so called susceptibility to become a superconductor as a function of temperature diverges around 1 twelfth if you extrapolate it. So the mean field transition temperature in this so called weak coupling or intermediate coupling Hubbard model, if I take the results, this is not only this, in fact I can take Tomale's result, 
or I can adapt a square lattice result from all these fronts, you find a scaling which is according to RVB theory. Now let me put the number, the number is embarrassingly large. I do not get 7 Kelvin, I get 700 Kelvin, but I should take it with a caution, pinch of salt. It tells me that if you have a silver lattice, the local pairing correlations are very high. However, in reality, many other com competitors will come and reduce this pairing correlation into local phenomena rather than uh, real superconductivity. But this is good enough for me because never before I had an opportunity to have such strong local pairing correlations. Now, I am going to argue that in Tapa Pande system, because of the physics I was telling, you have this. Okay, let me now. So, there are, okay, now I am going to say where in Tapa Pande system two dimensional islands like this appear. So, there are electronically isolated, this is what I proposed uh, last year and this year, 2D triangle. I will. So, finding faults, not with Tapa and Pande. Now, what is a fault in crystallography? You take uh, FCC lattice, you have ABC, ABC, ABC stacking, but it turns out the stacking energy of this sequence is very low. So, you can create faults very easily. Tapa Pande tells me 70 percent of the faulty. So, it is good for me. So, here what you find is in the sequence I have made a wrong, I have put A here, I have put C here. How does it help? Now, let Aristotle tells the following. Please do not mistake me that I know classic things very well. You know, thanks to Google, I was trying to look at the meaning of faulty, then I came across this. It says between two correlated faults lie virtue. See, many people over eat, some people under eat. Both are bad, right? They are correlated faults. So, you eat normally. So, it is a virtue. You remain healthy. So, between two correlated faults lies uh, virtue. So, I am saying between two faults lies high TC superconductivity. How do it happen? So, I have no time because Ganesh is warning me. If you look at electronic structure of this stacking, what happens is this AA stacking is a metastable state but you know there are various reasons that we can locally be stable. This AA, these two layers of triangular light which is on top of each other nearly becomes insulating because of very strong vertical bonding. Similarly, CC becomes insulating. So, basically I am isolating a B layer, a triangular lattice layer which according to me is a very high TC superconductor at local level. So, this is the very important point. So, uh, now, there are other evidences for this through electronic structure calculations. You can repeat this uh, uh, stacking fault, then you get two dimensional Fermi surface supporting my quantum chemistry. So, now what I have done is basically by through faults, I have inserted local regions where the pairing correlation is very high. Now, but you know, if pairing correlations are high and well separated, nothing will happen. But this is where quantum mechanics come. This is well known in the field of granular superconductivity. If you have grains of superconductors, and even if there is a non metal uh, metallic non superconducting, there can be so called proximity effect. Electrons are quantum mechanical. So, they will feel the pairing and communicate it to the neighbor. So, there will be a web of communication connect created among these islands, and that is well established granular node superconductivity. So, here is a possibility that in top up and a systems, I call it as islets of resonating valence bond state, like islands, small islets. So, strictly quasi one dimensional, similarly you can imagine quasi one dimensional and okay, these are all other. Uh, so, thus we get RVB islets distributed throughout nanostructure. Proximity effect creates an RVB islet web, granular ambient superconductivity emerges. All these things are all words, you can quantify them using simple models. Fortunately, models are already available, I have used them and find that you can get this scale. But in the modeling, I have to be very careful because I have no idea about the statistics of these islets I am talking about. And also, uh, they with, uh, with, uh, we are discussing with Hassan, Shankar, Ganesh and Lad about this possibility of local islands surviving in the background of a Fermi C. So, there is some critical view at which you can survive. So, lots of interesting issues. So, so this is my concluding slide basically. Structural irregularities abound in nature and man-made nanostructures.
nature as well as in man made nanostructures and mono emitters. So, it is likely that there exists plenty of granular ambient superconductors in nature which are fragile, elusive, ephemeral to varying degrees. So, you go home, take a piece of gold, if you do a careful experiment, you will see local superconductivity, but it is not useful. So, Tapa and Pandey with great effort they have seen, now they are still struggling. So, I believe that now there is a way, particularly after my theoretical suggestion, that it should be possible to engineer nanostructures because there is a lot of development in nanostructures. I have some specific suggestions how to engineer nanostructures and look for this kind of local height something. So, there may be surprises in metallurgy and min, uh, metallurgy, GY and mineralogy. I will complete in the next. So, metallurgy is a very rich field. We have experts like Murthy in IIT Madras, you know, you talk to him, there are variety of wonderful things in uh, uh, metallurgy, very strange phenomena and mineralogy. You look at uh, minerals, you know, gold occur as something called veins in quartz, so they occur streaks. So, I am frustrated, I want to test superconductivity, there are at least local superconductivity. So, according to this, wherever there are defects, there are also virtues, okay. So, a great future lies ahead, I believe. Thank you for your attention. Pritam. Ah, in okay, top up and okay, very good. So, it is like a weak link phenomenon. You have strong local pairing, then you have a weak connection through proximity effect. So, the proximity effect depends on the nature of electronic states in between. And further, there is another thing that I did not have time to tell. According to this theory, the local superconductivity, for example, if you take this triangular planes has something called d plus i d symmetry, it carries finite angular momentum. Now, that has to be transmitted through a medium which supports s wave superconductivity. So, there is a mismatch at the boundary to that extent it will be reduced. So, what you have is strong fellows who are very weakly connected. So, sometimes depending on various factors, this connection can break either electronically or mechanically, I do not know. So, why it is so irregular? So, if I have no answer but it is possible within this model because the granular superconductors that we know are fairly robust, they are compacted superconducting grains whereas here there is they are compact at the atom level. So, these islets are some kind of emergent objects locally, they can fluctuate, they can move around. So, I do not know. But the stacking poles are all stable. Exactly, the atoms are stable because it is a very, it is like a uh, like a jewel, you know gold uh, very hard and compact and uh, there are no voids, no mechanical uh, these things. Just a clarification, Sometimes. Even that is yeah, because yeah, I should have said oxygen is deadly in this case apparently. See gold is very uh, noble, it does not get oxidized, silver can get. So, if oxygen get go in between gaps and so on, these things. So, they have systematically studied with oxygen atmosphere, things getting degraded. These are hypotheses at the moment. But some other monovalent atoms? Sorry? Using some other monovalent atoms? Some other monovalent? Monovalent atoms. So exactly. Monovalent so, in fact, I you know, I am happy that I, I made that statement first to them that they thought there is something special about silver and gold. Now, I told them no, there is nothing special, use copper it is cheaper. So, uh, friends at IIT Madras are trying. So, in principle this theory ex does not exclude copper, sodium, pota sodium potassium uh, they are explosive you have to be careful, cesium rubidium expensive, lithium. So, there is more scope now. So, in one of my unwritten paper I have written a title poor man's route to room temperature superconductor copper. Metal to metal. So, and also this can be cluster size dependent. I mean that, that also explains if you repeat the measurements again, whenever some kind of annealing, 
mm-hmm. you go back and forth, I warm, warm and cool. The cluster itself also changes. Metal, 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 ah, so it's a very important point. Uh, metal insulator transition is very ubiquitous, and the metal to metal transition is not that well known. There are some situations. Here, the thing is so dense in terms of electrons, so it is difficult to envisage a metal to metal transition. We thought about it. That is a possibility of metal to metal transition, because individually they have big Fermi surface, almost identical. So, there are not sharp changes, so it is difficult to imagine metal to metal transition. In principle, it is possible. It metal to insulated transition is very ubiquitous. Here, there is no insulating, when you put sil- uh, uh, when you oxygen, there is insulating uh, layers coming in between. So, here it is supposed to be at least, uh, Tapa Pandey tells me that it is very compact, there are no other inclusions, and it is atomic level compact, and it is re- metal uni- throughout. There is also one more evidence for that. Recently, they have done optics. So, you expect plasma and resonance from if you have a gold silver nanoparticle in vacuum or in a dielectric, you get strong May resonance and uh, surface plasmas. You do not see it here, indicating the surfaces are metallic, you know, they, they are not, while they are different in terms of silver and atom, but at level of electrons, they are very homogeneous, there are, except for some pockets like this. Ah, so, uh, b- what I have been suggesting is just to do an exper- STM experiment with s- simple silver, silver or gold. So, you can create stacking faults at will and have edges, and then you should see some pseudo gap. But you should be able to make a two dimensional. Exactly. Or you can also, you know, there are now probes, you can have stacking faults embedded below some level. Through some probe, you can sense a possibility of local. R pace, for example, you can go to 10, 15 angstrom unit. So, there should be some pseudo gap. So, the I think it looks as if people do not read these archive papers, like you know, because they want some the world to prove Tapa and Pandey right and then they will look at it. So, at the moment, that is uh, I mean, my point is that you know, the people should jump at it, you know, it is a very great opportunity, it is not theoretically impossible. So, uh, there are uh, you know smoking guns like this, a very simple STM or some other scanning probe met- can see these local packets of superconductivity. There are also so called noise measurements. If electrons are correlated in pairs, if you do short noise experiment, in addition to short noise of electrons, you will see charge 2 e noises. And also, I should point out historically, strong diamagnetism has been seen in copper. Not far from here is Chidambaram, Anomaly University. 1930s, uh, MSR Rao, not the MSR Rao from IIT Madras now. MS Ramachandra Rao, he discovered anomalous diamagnetism in copper when it is prepared in a particular way. In fact, Japanese confirmed it, so it is a very old result. Anomalous diamagnetism has been seen in silver and gold. So, they cannot be explained by standard one electron picture. That is the conclusion by Joe Imri, a distinguished theorist from Israel, who is no more, unfortunately, he passed away last year. So, he wrote his last word saying that you see anomalous diamagnetism in gold. But one electron theory is that I am used to cannot explain this, something else is going on. Ah. Persistent currents. Persistent Ah, see, the, the, the distances are like 10 nanometers, yeah, typically. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but so, so, I mean, uh, uh, this circulating current is basically a kind of particle hole correlation. Correct, correct. Okay. So, I mean, uh, if, if upper parent can get coherent. No, no, they get coherent I might, uh, through. I, I might conceive of uh, uh, a particle hole pair also. See, uh, let, me, let me tell the audience what uh, Mukul is saying is that it is known in nanoparticle system that are called a persistent current phenomenon. Some current path which is kind of isolated, so current can flow 
longer than the normal and then you can have diamagnetism. So, he is saying is it possible to have this paths in silver gold uh, nano system of Tapa and Pandey. The point is this is not the usual nano materials connect embedded in an instrument, it is all metal everywhere. So, it is difficult for me to imagine such conducting paths. They are spherical. Numbers, now numbers can, yeah, uh, that is, for example, uh, uh, yeah, I think the, the diamagnetism that you get from such isolated loops cannot explain uh, like you know 5 percent diam perfect diamagnetism you see. You need too many of these loops. 